Tom Young, and this is a 330 GTC that just came in the shop. And i um, gonna take a look at it on this hot, steamy day. So new customer brought in this car, um, and uh, I'm just going over some of this stuff and uh, just seeing what I see. On these cars, the first thing I take a look at, 330 GTC, is the suspension. The reason being is there is a recall on these cars and what it involves with and maybe what I'll do is I'll show it to you on the side that's easy to show so 330 GTC's except for late ones which the but most GTC's have this design issue <clears throat> they're coil over front suspensions so you can see the top of the shock and the whole front suspension is held on these coilovers because it's the coil and the shock and this whole suspension is held with this loop of steel there is a space between the frame and this loop of steel and if you look closely it's not boxed in it's just that little piece of steel not understanding exactly why Ferrari didn't box this in in the first place but this little piece of steel <clears throat> is missing and you can even see this one's deforming a little bit. It's kind of bent around um, because there was a recall in 67 that said that these things could break. Well, the problem with these breaking is if the if this shock breaks, that sus the, su the suspension comes up and kind of jams. But what's more dangerous <clears throat> is when the driver's side breaks. Because when the driver's side breaks, which is harder to see, see if I can find it, if I can actually get uh, get my GoPro, you end up having to look upside down at it. But you can see that the same loop of steel is here, right? And there's the that's the open gap where I can put my finger in there, okay? But when that breaks, it collapses the steering it collapses the shock into the steering column. That locks your steering. So if you're driving along and that little loop of steel breaks and uh, <clears throat> it locks your steering, you have no steering, the suspension's collapsed, you're still rolling along, but you're not gonna be able to steer anything. And, and in fact, that's the reason why there was a recall because from what I understand, and some of this is lore, is that uh, Ferrari had to sit, put out a note for a recall because there was a death in Germany. Someone was driving on the highway and hit a bump and broke that, that shock mount and it went into the steering column and that was it. Now, I will post the letter. You will see the letter. It's an official letter from the mid 60s or the late 60s rather after these cars were built telling everybody how to repair it and all of this stuff. But what drives me nuts <clears throat> is when I look at a GTC and it's not repaired. And I think to myself, how does, you know, okay, if I could see it wasn't in the old days where, you know, or nowadays where you have the internet and you can just look up a, a recall notice on a car. It wasn't like everybody got a recall notice. But on GTCs, I've posted this letter on my website for years. I've told people publicly you need to go and every time you see a GTC make sure that that is done and I've gone to Ferrari shops where they had it and they weren't done and I've told them to do it and shown them the letter and they've actually thanked me and, and replaced it and, and welded that thing up but I always am amazed that I still find cars that show up <clears throat> with that problem and here we go here's another one so I'm going to recommend and actually insist to this new customer, uh, you need to fix this. Uh, and in fact, I'm not gonna drive this car until we fix this. And I won't road test it or anything because uh, it's not like I'm gonna go hammering away at the thing. But you know, if you hit a bump the wrong way and that stresses that little loop of steel and you lock your steering, I don't wanna be the guy driving it and doing it. So um, at the very least, <clears throat> I'm gonna start with this car and and uh, and do that. But uh, you know, let's let's go over the rest of the car and, and, and enough of this uh, fear fear mongering and all that other stuff. But uh, you know, the rest of the car looks pretty good. I mean, it, it looks clean. You know, a couple finishes, 
are not right like this this uh booster is silver it should be you know gold cad and again uh, part of what i do is i i'm not trying to make every car a show car but looking to see w what is original and what's still on the car allows me to assess the car and see if you know whoever worked on it knew what they were doing or didn't know what they were doing and um sometimes those clues like you know if somebody actually restored this car and didn't do that shock update uh do you really work on gtcs do you know gtcs really well and then then what else did you miss on this car not trying to throw shade on anybody who works on these cars but it is part of of uh, of putting these cars together i'm not saying that i know how to do everything but I try my best to to use the original and the correct pieces. Like I'm looking here and it's there's missing this little spiral bumper here that that um, you know would go on both sides. That's missing. That's something that I would put on the list. Um, <clears throat> but uh, you know, other than that, you know, I have coils in there. Those are Bosch replacement coils, so that I could see that that's that's been done. Um, I have to look a little further to see whether or not it has electronic ignition, or maybe they hid ignition boxes somewhere, or maybe they're just running regular ignition. Um, and let's see, I'm just looking to see, but other than that, everything kind of is there. I'm just going to make a list of stuff that I see. The hood pad's a little worn, looks like it's an original hood pad, um, <clears throat> but just a, uh, just a little, a little worn. Um, the uh, check strap on this side is incorrectly installed, so that's not really doing anything. So in fact, what happens is when you, when you go further out, the hood kind of stands up and doesn't really do anything and that strap is is not in the right place so so whoever installed that that strap didn't exactly know where it went so i have to relocate that um <clears throat> but anyway so just going through the car and um you know we'll take a look underneath more importantly than anything else i mean all these cars they look great up top you know obviously everybody kind of restores these cars so it looks good on the top side but but let's uh let's open it up and, and take a look underneath <laughs> You know, inspecting one of these cars is always about trying to decide whether or not um, we want to put all the details back or just make it into a driver. Not everybody wants to make a concourse car. <clears throat> so I kind of have to take two positions on this. I could point out everything that is missing on this car and is incorrect, but does it really affect the car as far as driving it, as far as cosmetically? Does the rest of the world really care or no i mean there could only be about one percent of the world that would even know what is missing on one of these cars for instance when i get underneath here the first thing i see is it's missing this little plastic uh trim piece that goes around this little pinch weld that goes around the bottom of the car um does it really matter i mean no but at a concourse level yeah that's that's uh that's kind of nice to have but the other reason why it's good to notice these kind of things is because um, knowing what's missing can give you an idea how well this car is maintained. If parts keep coming off of the car and they never get put on, then you know a lot of people get their fingers on these cars and they actually don't know anything about the cars. Like I'll show you a thing that I like that I see. Um, the, these reverse lights have these big screws, the flathead screws. That's the original screws that hold these reverse lights on <clears throat> and both of them are there. Uh, a lot of them, a lot of times they get they get lost and you know you have to know who sells them and who where to get them and and uh, and reinstall them when they're on when they're missing on the car. So it's kind of nice. Now, does it really change the drivability of the car? No, but it's a clue to me about how original the car is, or at least all the things. It hasn't been messed with. hasn't been you know f five or six people touching them and not knowing anything about a three thirty GTC. And then and then losing parts. Um, another example is when I look at the exhaust. The exhaust is an ANSA exhaust. Well, you know we have this whole discussion about what's correct and what's not correct. You know ANSA is obviously not correct on this car, but does it really matter? Most people think ANSA is correct. Let them believe that it's correct. It's it's fine. It looks fine, um, but it's also good to know that it's not the original exhaust. The exhaust has been replaced, and it's been replaced by a you know a, a, a replacement you know kind of like an aftermarket exhaust but the correct one would have either been a Soretto or or a uh, um, why is it I can't think of it Soretto but anyway so that's that's kind of what I see with the exhaust
Uh, you know, another example, this little cover, this little nipple at the bottom, that covers the, uh, the drain plug for the gas tank, the bridge pipe. Uh, nice to see that that's there because, uh, you know, a lot of times those things come off and people don't put them back on. <clears throat> I see a, a little crack there on the, on the boot. Uh, these were, uh, there's a sliding uh, ball bearings in there and that boot keeps a lot of the dirt and grease out so that, that could probably need replacing. That would require the half shafts to come out cleaned and then uh, and re repacked. Uh, I don't know if the light is too bright but you can kind of see there's a little bit of silver overspray. Somebody just kind of put some spray paint on those calipers. <clears throat> But nothing's really jumpy out. I mean, a little of the bushings are a little worn, but a lot of times that bushing, those bushings are just exterior uh, wear on the or dry rot on the bushings. Uh, not too bad. I mean, it's it's uh, yeah, you could replace all the bushings, but I would probably drive the car first to make sure that it felt you know, that 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 little boot is gator is also probably a little worn. <clears throat> you know, the bushings on the suspension look a little worn, but I would drive it first to see how it feels. Uh, it could be misleading. They look dry rotted, but I would I would be curious. It, you do see a little deformation on the on the bushing. We'll have to take a look when we dry the car. Here's the fuel pump. Looks pretty old and original. Transaxle looks pretty clean, not a lot of leaks. Looks like the axle shaft seals are are dry. Let's see if we can get up in here. They look okay, and not, you know, not super wet. The U joint is a little wet. Could be a little bit of axle shaft seal, but it it's hard to tell. It could be just a little bit. But the transaxle itself looks pretty dry. Exhaust clamps look pretty new, so maybe somebody's put a new ANSA exhaust on this at some point. <clears throat> I did notice over here, there's some scrape marks up there on the frame. Maybe one of these U-joints might have come loose or something might have come loose and scratched that up at one point. Oh, I know what that is. So the... the that's not actually I realize what that is so what that is is when you're changing the clutch on this car you have to slide the whole transaxle back and uh, sometimes to get some more distance you will disconnect the drive shaft and then it will just flop around um, against the uh, the frame rail when you're when you're moving it so that's that's just that's just normal normal scrape, scraping and stuff nothing to worry about Even though it's an ANSA exhaust, it looks like it's pretty new, pretty clean, not really rusty. It may have even been powder coated. The paint on it is really thick. <clears throat> the frame here looks pretty good. Like I don't see any signs of rust. It's a pretty, pretty clean car underneath here. See here, the frame rails are nice and clean. Just a little bit of dirt and mud, but Pretty good. Uh, you know, same thing. I see a lot of black spray paint on everything, which you know people tend to do. It's you know, as we say, it's restoration in a spray can, so it's a lot of uh, just um, black paint. The flex hose here looks original. I mean, like I don't think those braided hoses have been around in a long time so I don't know those I if I were to make a recommendation I would probably consider replacing those flex hoses on the brakes <clears throat> oil pan looks pretty dry doesn't don't see any leaks or uh, slave cylinder on the clutch looks pretty dry the rubber looks pretty new may have been replaced recently Yeah, same thing. I see these brake hoses. That braided line, unless somebody's doing a reproduction, that might be an original brake hose. 
Uh, you got a ball joint here. The gator is torn, so that should probably be replaced. It's nice to see this cross member here is not too dented. Sometimes you get jacks and things like that that'll dent that. But you do see a few dents here. This is one of the lower parts of the car, so those things, these little braces here tend to get bent and then jacks will go here. You're showing that usual damage. Uh, looks like somebody just tried to clean up the, the shocks a little bit because you could literally see where the where the paint ends, where the brush wouldn't make it. So somebody just either had a little spray can and tried to clean up the shocks a little bit. Got a torn boot here on the on the tie rod end that should probably be replaced. Uh, the nose uh, radiator cover is there. It looks like it's a reproduction. It's a fiberglass piece. Uh, <clears throat> the electric fans are there. It looks like the radiator has been recorded with a modern core. It's one of those Z Z fin radiator cores, not the original, but it looks fairly new. Uh, not a lot of paint on there with the original Lucas electric cooling fans and then you have the overfill tank which should be black satin black they seems like they paint they stripped the original FIM FIM uh, overflow tank but basically um, <clears throat> didn't paint it black uh, you have the horn and it's cracked but that's the original horn cover probably with the uh, horn compressor underneath there and of course the other cooling fan it's missing the front license plate bracket uh, and again, same thing. Oh, you see a big chip in the paint there from the from the turn signal assembly being too close. Um, that might have happened. Maybe you got into a little bumper bump and pushed it in and dented that and chipped all the paint off. Uh, you can then now see how the former bodywork is, how thick the filler was on the on the paint there. That's why it just chunked off because it was, you know, a lot of body guys would just you know, refine the body lines on the car with filler. <clears throat> and you can also see there's a big paint trip right there. And that's kind of normal stuff. Um, but again, you know, the, the big screws are there so that hold that, that turn signal fixture. See how the bodywork is different? See how this one, the, the, there's very little room for this. Um, and then when you look at this side, there seems to be tons of room. So uh, I'll have to, when the car is back down on the ground, I'll take a look at the bumpers and see how they look on the car. Maybe that one's pushed up a little bit and this one's down and that's why this one fits better than that one. Uh, we'll have to take a closer look. The tires are all brand new because you look at it, it still has the little, the little nipples on it. it hasn't, even, hasn't even worn those off. So these tires are brand spanking new. Yeah, see, so it's a 43rd month of of 21 so I mean even though they're three years old there's a little bit of uh, wheel damage here a couple chips um, <clears throat> it looks like there's a lot of like little spider spider cracks and things like that um, what happens on these and this car really has a bigger problem check this out yikes so it looks like, okay, so this car, this wheel is very different paint. It looks like it's been powder coated, but the, but what are these bubbles? What's going on? Well, what's going on is, and they did use some kind of phosphate um, primer, it looks like, because from a, looks like either somebody took a hammer or something to it and uh, chipped the paint there. But uh, you can see that there's a couple, there's some kind of primer layer underneath there, but what that is, <clears throat> is these wheels are magnesium alloy wheels and they have a lot of moisture inside of them in the, in the cast. So what happens is you, you have to bake all that moisture out or else what will happen is you powder coat it and that's what this stuff is. This is like a big sheet of plastic. I mean, look, I'll hold it to you, look. That's just like a big vinyl wrapper when you put powder coat that thickly on there. But if there's moisture inside of it, it'll it'll expand and then it'll just push all the paint off the surface of the of the wheel. I've had these failures before. Um, uh, it's not perfect. I mean, powder coating for me sometimes is durable for good for um, 
for uh, you know just a street driven car. Sometimes they're a little too sparkly. This is pretty sparkly as far as the the, the silver paint they used, but it's it's uh, it you risk that sometimes if you don't heat these wheels enough and drive all the moisture out and then you powder coat it, you're gonna get this problem. So we're gonna have to find a solution for this. Uh, one solution, strip it obviously, strip all the paint off of it and paint it with regular silver paint, spray paint. Um, and then uh, if it does this, the, the paint may be a little bit less prone, um, but I think, I believe personally, it's more about the prep. If we prep them and bake them well enough for whatever overnight and you bake all the moisture out of it, and then you powder coat, it will probably okay. That being said, I've had that even fail. So I don't know if there's necessarily a solution. A lot of people, what they've been doing is now they've still been baking them and then they've just been painting them with regular paint. And uh, But again, I don't know what their success rate is either. It may be the same as the ones that I'm getting with my uh, powder coater, but uh, that one's gonna have to be addressed. Let's take a little bit closer look at the other ones here. <clears throat> yeah, I think looking closer at this, and if you, I don't know if my, my drop lights flickering, but you could see some of the spider webbing here. I think maybe all the other wheels were done conventionally because they definitely have a different finish. And you see this one's even got like surface imperfections. I don't know if you can see that. I'm just trying to change the lighting so you can see. So um, I think that front left tire <clears throat> has been painted with a different technique than the other, the other three. Not to say that the other three are any better shape. Looks like this one's gotten some good curb rash here. We'll have to decide what we want to do, uh, how we're going to fix that. One thing about this GTC that I have to make a change about is this check strap. So discussions about what is concourse correct and what is doesn't make that much of a difference. I think sometimes it's a, really a matter of knowing what's correct and not just because it's concourse, but because there's a reason why things are done a certain way. And um, whoever installed this check strap, I'm gonna find out what the real reason is. Maybe there's another reason, but it's installed down here. And it's just like, why is that? It's supposed to be installed onto this nut. So then the reason behind that is because Ferraris have this prop rod. And so <clears throat> it's supposed to be so that when you open the hood, the prop rod kind of comes back, closes, but this check strap keeps the, keeps the hood from overextending. But what happens here is this check strap doesn't do anything. It's not even keeping the hood from going over center or over, opening too far. Now, luckily for us, this thing's not going too far to where it's chipping the paint or it's, or it's um, you know, overextending and bending the lip of the hood. But you can see that what's stopping the hood from over overextending is, is the hood itself, which is not good. So, yes, you would get points off for a Concours, but the, the reason why I'm kind of anal about this stuff is that's the reason why the check strap is shorter and, and put up that way. And whoever installed this had no idea how it's supposed to go. And in fact, you know, this isn't even, like that's not even doing anything. So I'm gonna try to fix that. So uh, fixed it, relocated the check strap from, you know, kind of hanging out down there to here. I've also wrapped it in um, some shrink tube. That's the original stuff had a vinyl, had a vinyl wrap. So like when you closed it, it didn't scratch up any paint. And um, that was missing too, so I went ahead and did that. So now, with the prop rod in place, all you have to do is just kind of flick it up. Prop rod comes out. Now the strap holds the holds the hood from overextending, and then you can close it. Uh, that's that's the way it's supposed to work. Another thing I found on this car, I'm just going over. Even get you a light here to show you, but the parking brake is like really stuck. So we're gonna have to free it up and figure out why it's so uh, so tight. So the parking brake cable 
on this car comes down to this and then pulls on this lever that then goes to two cables that go towards the back. So when I pull on this, it looks like everything is moving. I mean, it might be a little bit of an adjustment, but this is free. But this part doesn't seem to be moving at all. And when you look at the rust, it's probably seized in here. So uh, got to figure out how to free that up. Well, I managed to get the parking brake lever unseized, so now it uh, it pulls in and out nice and and uh, cleanly. Uh, I had to take this bracket off and um, basically clean out and oil that cable that goes through that sheath. Um, it just must have gotten rusty and then just seized. But you know, in you just kind of call extra. You're exercising the parking brake, and the more you do it, the better it gets. I was able to spray some penetrating oil in there and just get it to kind of go through the cable and and loosen up. But uh, <clears throat> the next step is to look at the brake pads because even though um, with it now working, it's still really not holding the car. I think the brake pads are, are kind of worn, so I'm going to get a new set of, uh, of brake pads and install that. That way the, the whole bargaining brake system is working up to, uh, you know, 100%. Once I got the cable unseized I took a look at the uh, the brake pads on the uh, on the back and you could see that they're a little worn I mean if you look at it it's the pad is supposed to be straight and it's worn out on a crooked you know kind of crooked so that's that just shows that the brake pad is worn um, <clears throat> so I'm just gonna order a new set of brake pads and uh, party brake pads and uh, we'll get those in and and finish up the rest of the parking brake. Well, that's really basically uh, my first report on this uh, GTC. It's uh, coming together. We'll fix a couple things and uh, get it going. But uh, so far, I think it's a it's a pretty nice car. Just a couple little things, little tweaks to make it that much better. But uh, we'll we'll keep following along. Thanks for watching.